Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we're coming back to the Mission Impossible franchise. Why? We already covered one to three. Oh, yeah. And there's a movie. Oh, and that'll do it. So we'll do four to six, mm. or four to six. Just four, yeah, we'll do four to we'll six, four all to right? Six. Uh, if people could leave a like, that would be terrific also. Love that. It's always good to come back to a franchise, especially one that continues to kind of improve itself. Mm. And one of the big improvements to this movie is that, just like Sex in the City 2, they're taking things to Dubai, Mason. Oh, yes. There was such a... And it's fabulous, <laughs> let me tell you. There really was a specific window. In yeah, it was. It cracked open and the, the dust storm came there in. There was a second specific, oh. more of a metaphorical window. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Where movies would take you to Dubai and go, yeah? what, do you, <laughs> what do you reckon? Very glamorous, isn't it? <laughs> Dusty, certainly, but glamorous. Just to me, someone who's been to Dubai Airport and looked out the windows. Yeah, it seems all right, I guess. Great. Yeah. You think you got the full picture? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Cities in the desert run by oil billionaires? I don't give a fuck. Wow. Just quite frankly. Pretty bold stance. We're never going to get sponsored by corrupt oil billionaires nah. in the Middle East now. Nah, trust me. They don't care. Okay, great. If they wanted to sponsor us, this would not get in the way of that. If they want to sponsor or murder us, <laughs> they'll find a way. That's right. Anyways, Mason, I feel like all the elements of the previous Mission Impossible movies is kind of perfected and wrapped up in a tight new package in this movie. Oh, look, I would agree. With some exceptions. Yes, there we go. That's yeah. that's it. Okay, some well, caveats. Okay, right. There's right. a third small metaphorical window. Now, when you now when you said tight little package, do you, are you expecting a clip of Tom Cruise's bottom? Yes. That's what you're hoping for. That's exactly what I'm hoping okay, for. Okay, right. And it's quite impressive that Brad Bird, who directed The Incredibles, mm -hmm. who directed The Iron Giant, mm -hmm. who directed the movie Tomorrowland after this, mm. this is his live-action debut. Yes. J.J. Abrams couldn't come back because I think he was doing um, Monster on a Train and the Train crashed and it's sort of E.T., but it's not uh, E.T. Okay, it's right. sort of Stranger Things, but it's before Stranger Things. Wow. Yeah. Remember that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had a name. He was probably deep in the midst of planning to never finish a Star Wars trilogy, you <laughs> know what I mean? Or a Star Trek trilogy. Yeah, sure, okay, right. You might be right. I've got to find an unsatisfying ending to this. <laughs> But I feel like, you know, there's a there's a heist in it. Mm. There's a big stunt. Yep. There's the gadgets. There's emotional stakes. There's emotional stakes. Yeah, and you know what? It's a little diehard. They all get messed up. Which they get I appreciate. messed up, yeah. Which, which doesn't really happen in all of them, I think. No. I mean, Tom Cruise has a, you know, a bomb nearly go off in his brain. And that did has, happen. He's probably had a series of heart attacks at this point <laughs> through, through most of these. But, but I don't know. I really felt it in this one. Yeah. Everybody's all beaten and bloodied by the end of this. Yeah. Being microwaved. You know, so on and <laughs> so forth. True, yeah. Yeah. And one of the elements that I feel like that was perfection uh, is Tom Cruise's hair from Mission Impossible 2. Mm. They've attempted a revival of that. That's true, it's yeah. It's not quite there, though, I feel. I don't know whether, you know, he's kind of, he's aged up a little bit. Oh, yeah, okay. It's just... It's thinned out a little, perhaps. I, I don't even know if it's that. It's uh, become more brittle. It's that It's that Middle East air. Uh, it's that desert air, that right? That might be it. He's got mm. a young man's hair, but that's a young man's game. See, I feel like it felt... Like the Mission Impossible 2 hair, but like a more realistic take on oh, the Mission Impossible 2 hair. Because that was hair. too... It was too perfect, I think, and too yeah. stylized. It was too John Woo in that That's way. That's a fair but, point, actually. And I think this... I'm looking at this, this wrong. Is a, this is a metaphor for this movie, I think. It is a more, you know, it's a it's a more realistic take, yeah. perhaps, on, on some of the previous ones. Well, this is the movie where everything goes bad and breaks all the time. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's and that's not an accident, by the way. If you're like, none of these gadgets are working. I don't know if they thought this through. I think they did think it through, actually. Yeah. Yeah. They should have put the retinal scanner on the side of the, the train in a more convenient position, I think. <laughs> He's having trouble getting to it. Yeah. The hologram machine in the in the halls of the Kremlin, it's, it's malfunctioning. You could have set it up so it could, like, project to two or more people. This has created a sort of dramatic tension. I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. The bomb went off in the Kremlin. I don't think that should have happened, actually. That's bad. That's bad for the characters in this movie. They're on the run now. If both of his clinging gloves worked, he could just go right up that... If you just maybe they he, ha, he could rent a helicopter. That's actually a good point. Why didn't they both work? Because that would have been much easier. He would have just gone up and then would come have gone back. Up exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Why didn't the, why isn't the server room accessible from inside the building? Somebody let me make a Mission Impossible movie where it's just very easy and goes fine, and, and they nobody gets hurt. They don't need any of the gadgets. <laughs> it's like reverse. You know, in the you know in the Bond movies when he's issued all the gadgets, and by sheer coincidence, he just happens to need. Practically all of them. Oh, 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 I just happen to need the lockpick phone yeah. or whatever. Just a movie where he gets issued all the stuff and then he just walks straight in. He doesn't <laughs> need anything. <laughs> Absolutely. And then he realises when he gets home, he's still got it all in his pockets and uh, and he hasn't signed it back in so he gets fired <laughs> Yeah, for admin reasons. Yeah, Absolutely. 
Now, look, we've seen Ethan Hunt do some spectacular things over these movies as of so far, mm. and in the future, of course. But I think the most spectacular thing I've ever seen him do, and that includes this movie where he climbs the tallest building in the world, is that he perfectly sketches a man's face right. in biro on his hand yeah, in yeah. about 12 seconds. And he's like, who's this? Right. And they're like, oh yeah, I know him. And Jeremy Renner's character is like, mm, a crude sketch, but I think it's... <laughs> you know, you know in, the com- in, in comic books generally, when you're trying to introduce a cool new character, yeah. often in Marvel comics, the way they would do that is they would have the character show up and beat up Wolverine. Because <laughs> Wolverine's like a cool, so big just, time tough guy. He's just guy. eating his cornflakes. <laughs> right. The guy, guy jumps through the window and beats him up. But like, it's just an easy shorthand for this guy's a real badass kind of thing, you know. And it, and in a way, it sort of eventually it sort of grinds down Wolverine as like a, a worthwhile opponent if he keeps getting thumped by these newcomer Ulceran kind of guys. But I like the idea of Jeremy Renner's character as the new guy on the block, and he proves it by being like, mm, pretty crude sketch. I don't know. If I was there, I would have, I would have handed him the pen and go, go on, you draw, you draw me. Draw me right now yeah, on yeah, your yeah. hand. Yeah, I'll just I'll I'll just stand I'll just sit completely stock still. I won't even be a guy running through the Kremlin <laughs> while explosions go off. I'll just be here. Yeah, right? I did that from memory. You didn't have to do it from memory. You can look at me and do yeah, it. Yeah. I do love that Kremlin infiltration though. Mm. You know, I it's got one of my favorite things from the first movie where the disguise is just Tom Cruise with a fake nose or whatever. That's right. Yeah. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to masquerade as a guy who looks quite a lot like you by sheer coincidence. (laughs) Just you with a moustache, I don't know. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, But I do miss the mask element of this. There is a moment where they're 3D printing some, and it just goes bad. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it spits out like Homer Simpson's makeup gun. (laughs) (laughs) Also, it's just the front, because normally they're like the whole head, right? Hmm. Right? I don't know. Yeah, no, Maybe no. there's a hair printing machine as well. There probably it's is a horrifying. Ha- <laughs> <laughs> it spits it out like a toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> a few things that really stand out for me. Go on. As mentioned, that Kremlin infiltration, and I just love the idea of that big fake wall. Mm. That's such a cool piece of tech. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like even now, you know, being 10 plus years on, just love that idea. Mm. Ahead of its time, Mason. Absolutely. It was the digital camera from Mission Impossible 2 of this movie, though. Just a really impressive piece of tech. Mm. Yeah. And, of course, the big stunt of this movie. And I think this really solidified the Tom Cruise will do a big stunt mm. and almost kill himself for you, the audience. My only note I have on it, it just says, the world's tallest building, a pair of capri pants and a dream. <laughs> and he's done it. I think that's beautiful, actually. <laughs> yeah, that it's just incredible. I remember that moment watching this in cinemas, and I don't even think I saw it on an IMAX or whatever, when he first steps out and the camera mm. follows him. It's just yeah. like... You, you know, get that you feeling feel in your nuts. <laughs> you get that feeling in your nuts, Mason. Mm, yeah, We're yeah. so at home. Or your lady nuts. Or your lady whatever. nuts. That's fine. But I can feel it in my ball. Listen to me. Really impressive. And obviously, like, it's all he's all rigged up and whatever. Mm. But he's he's that part of his brain that has... Speaking of rigged up, he's, he's shirtless for a lot of this movie. He's rigged up, Is that mate. his only time when he's... It's a great question. He's mostly beshirted, I think, for, yeah, the, for I the, all the previous ones. I think you're probably right, But yeah. in this one, he's like, no, nah, I got ripped for this, so yeah. uh, you, you, you're you going to see it. Yeah. I had to go to shirtless prison. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the explosion blew my shirt off. No. Oh. oh. what? Who put me in this shirtless hospital? Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. Who's responsible for this? No, I, I guess I'll take a leather jacket off the washing line. <laughs> Who's washing their leather jacket? <laughs> What's going on there? Maybe they were airing it out because they went to a party and they smoked in it all day, Mason. Maybe they're airing it out because a weird shirtless dude stole it from them and and, and wore it shirtless but a leather jacket and then threw it on the ground and they're like, oh, God, guess I'm airing this out again. (laughs) Speaking of clothing, though, Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about Tom Cruise's 2011 shiny blue suit. It's very shiny. What are you thinking? I think it works for Dubai. Yes. I think that's what he's going for. He's going for an underworld figure who's a little bit flashy. Mm, and a little okay. bit rock and roll. He's a bit like that, isn't he? Mm. Well, just like the movie where he was Mr. Rock and Roll or whatever. Mm. Remember that one? No. The, it, it, I was just agreeing with you. I'd hope you, I was hoping you'd move on. And there'll be images of you. that movie. <laughs> okay, great. It's called like Good Fun Rock Adventures or whatever, and it's a musical. Oh, Rock of Ages? Is nah. he in Rock of Ages? That doesn't sound right. Okay. Let's move it along. So Jeremy <laughs> Renner... Now we're moving it along. <laughs> Jeremy Renner... He's introduced into this franchise because the thinking was that is this a franchise that Tom Cruise can carry forever or will he want to carry it forever? Or will he die? Yeah. And the answer is not yet and he he will just keep doing it until he dies. Until he dies, yes. Yeah. Until, again, he he does a, a stunt in space. And he gets covered in ice and he just floats they off. They leave him there, yeah. yeah. Look, he's a good inclusion, but you clearly see 
what they're going for here where this is the it guy, you know, and this mm. is, he's, he's in Thor and he's soon to be in the Avengers and he's Jason Bourne now and whatever. Mm, yeah. He was, oh, yeah, I forgot he was he, Jason Bourne for a minute. He was bomb disposal, man. I know he wasn't really Jason Bourne. Don't. Just don't. I, I know... There are people going to the comments being like, actually, he was a different character. Nobody cares or knows what that character's name is. The character's name was Jason Bourne, two A's. <laughs> it's a Luke Skywalker situation. It certainly is, yeah. But uh, I love that Jeremy Renner is just walking around this universe thinking that he got Ethan Hunt's wife killed. Yeah. That's <laughs> his, that's his, guilt. That's his emotional backstory. Yeah. And at the end, uh, if we can rush to the end... Uh, yeah, he gets, uh, he gets to do the big jumping stunt, the Mission Impossible stunt. <laughs> so that, I feel like, would, you know... That's Tom Cruise's gift to him. To oh, be like, I see. I know you think yeah. that you killed my wife, but mm. okay, so you could do the Mission Impossible stuff. Oh, right. But it's with magnets or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And but then Tom Cruise is like, no, you didn't kill my wife. It was all we knew. I knew, and uh, you, you've been carrying this guilt for years. But actually, yeah, jokes on you. And uh, and Jeremy Ren is like, oh, we're cool then. I'd be like, you what? <laughs> Tell me earlier. Well, I'm assuming it was like a trust thing. Who do you trust? Who's wearing a mask? Mm. Who's not wearing a mask? That's right. You know? Who's wearing two masks? Mm. Who's wearing that double-sided mask they were printing? <laughs> Who's that for? I don't know. A Quintesson? Maybe. Uh, the He-Man character with like multiple faces? Mano many faces? Mano many faces, sure. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. Anyway, Benji's back, mm -hmm. and this time he's a field agent. Yes. And his big story arc is that he gets to shoot a guy in the back at the end. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He got him. Benji's a hero. That's right. And that's cool. So it all kind of culminates wildly, doesn't it, in a big car park punch-up. Um, <laughs> seems pretty right. dangerous, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. going on there. Is that, is that sort of car park common where they were? Mm, good question. Mm. Is it underground? I assume so. Or is it a tower? That was I a tower. So. It was a tower. Yeah. Who's to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it underground just a tower backwards? Oh, in a way. Or is it overground just an underground backwards? I don't know. I didn't <laughs> think you'd be asking so many questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm. But that's a fun, you know, punch up. It is the situation where, like, I feel like Ethan Hunt could beat this guy pretty quickly. Yeah, well, he, see, here's the thing. If I, were to, if I were to be critical of any element of this movie, yeah. it would be... That especially uh, since we got Philip Seymour Hoffman in the last one, mm. the villain in this is kind of eh. And he's fine. He's just yeah, a guy. He, is, he's, yeah. he wants to. He wants to blow up the world. Okay, great. Well, that's every Bond villain, isn't it? Did you like the bit where he suicided off that thing? That was kind of fun, actually. Yeah, <laughs> and he wore a white suit just for maximum suicidedness. Yes, exactly. But there's also a moment where I think it's him and his henchmen and it's just sort of bland and there's a point during the dust storm sequence where the henchman rips off some of his mask and that's the, the main guy yeah. and I'm like Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess somebody had to wear a mask but... Because I remember I think initially at the time like, oh are they the same guy? And even though I think they were in the same room like in <laughs> previous scenes. Yeah, but maybe so it's in his mind. Yeah, so it was just like, what's this reveal about? Mm. Oh, nothing. Yeah. That's cool, I guess. Yeah, it is cool. Leah Seydoux's in it, though. That's right. She's, she's like, got, here's some diamonds. She's I'll... got plenty of time to swan about in the pictures, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. uh, as the heir to the Seydoux fortune. Mm -hmm. Look it That's up. Right. That's true. That's right. It's true. I know we laugh, we jest, and we say she's the heir to the Seydoux fortune, but she is actually heir to a fortune. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just a different fortune, Oh, though. I see. Yeah. Uh, I thought Paula Patton did a great job. Yeah, me too. Uh, and and obviously uh, uh, Tom Cruise got a, a, a taste for Agent Carter's mm -hmm. because in Seven, Hayley Atwell, she plays Agent Carter. That's oh, her name. Oh, she's Jane Carter. Yeah. What do you think of that? She should have played Gun Carter. Oh! If you've seen that movie, Mason, which I know you have. Mm. Every man of a certain generation has seen that movie <laughs> and no one else. And there's a couple of things that we always come back to when we do these videos. One is, am I going to do a big stunt? I did mm. big stunts on the last three videos, Mason. Mm. Now, look, my wife is in Europe at the moment. Mm -hmm. I am parenting solo, so I will not so be... So, of course, you're going to do some big stunts. <laughs> no. <gasps> the pressure's higher than ever. The stunts are going to be bigger than ever. I don't... I. I'm too sleep deprivation to be doing big stunts right now, Mason. I will just die. If you were going to do a big stunt... Yeah. ...from this movie, what was the, what would the it big would, stunt... It would be a climbing thing. Sure, yeah. But, like, where do I do that, you know? The side of the podcast studio. <laughs> just put some dishwashing gloves on and, and stick yourself to the side of this window. Fine, I'll do it. All right, great. <laughs> And the other question we always have is, mm. Ethan Hunt is notorious for going rogue. Yes. And he never doesn't go rogue. Mm. Does this movie continue that trend? He absolutely goes rogue. But he sort of goes rogue with the blessing of the the, the secretary. But then he goes double rogue. He goes double rogue, yeah. Because yeah. the secretary's like, 
Certainly wouldn't want you to go rogue unless you went rogue over there yeah. in that train car that's got all your stuff in it. Oh, I thought you meant how he was undercover at the start pretending to go rogue. Oh, well, then he's gone triple rogue? God. Good for him. So rogue. Stepping it up. That yeah. is very rogue. Yeah. I can't wait to see how rogue he goes in, in Rogue Nation. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I imagine he'll go equally as rogue, yeah. but unfortunately there's a rogue nation pushing back from the other direction, so it's going to look like he goes less rogue. Oh, really? Okay. Mm. Anyways, Mason, it's time for Mission Trivia Ghost Trivia. This is a trivia segment of the video mm. where we look at trivia and go, wow, James really did his research on this one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> Should I practice one? Sure. Wow, James really did his research on this one. <laughs> This is the first film in the series to be released in IMAX. Oh, James really did his research on this one. It's true. The high quality screen hologram projector gadget used to conceal anyone behind it during the elaborate setup within the Moscow Kremlin scene was similarly used during the television series Mission Impossible 1966, Season 4, Episode 16, The Falcon, Part 3. There you go. That's funny. Do you isn't think it? that's uh, do you think that's deliberate? Like an homage? It might Brad, Brad Bird feels like he's known for his homages, but it also might just be a coincidence. Yeah. There's only so many weird gadgets you can think of. But he does love a throwback, like the Iron Giant. Oh, that's true. In that is true. Incredibles, mm. Tomorrow, yeah, Bill, yeah. Mm. you know? Dermot Mulroney, Ooh. you might know as an actor. I do. He was in My Best Friend's Wedding. He was. <laughs> okay, right. You looked at me like he wasn't. Your friend Barry, your best friend Barry. No, Mason. Oh. He was in a movie called My Best Friend's oh, Wedding no, with, yeah, no. with Julia Roberts mm. and Cameron Diaz. Wow. And Rachel Griffiths. Straight zone Rachel Griffiths. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Anyways, he plays cello. In the scoring orchestra for this movie. Huh. He's actually a classic. Not a character named Cello. <laughs> no. He's one of the party guests. And John Cello. He's actually a classic cellist who occasionally plays in soundtracks for movies and stuff. All right then. Yeah, there you go. Wow. One of the working titles for this fourth installment in the series, Mason. Go on. Was. Do you want to guess? No. It's Rogue Nation. Oh. Uh, which was actually used in the following movie. Yeah. You thought that was probably going in a different direction. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but then you went rogue in a way. I did, didn't I? Mm. Jeremy Renner's character Brand T <laughs> Brand T yes. was specifically created as an eventual replacement for Tom Cruise's character Ethan Hunt for when Cruise decides to step away or he dies. Do you think he's gonna be in seven or eight? Yeah, maybe. Feels like a good opportunity to bring him back. Right? You know? And Christopher McQuarrie, the writer and director for movies five to eight of this franchise, and probably nine, I assume did significant rewrites to the end of the film, including switching who kills the villain from Jeremy Renner's character, oh, yes. William Brand, to, <laughs> to Simon Pegg's character, Benji Dunn. He did this by pitching a father-son bond between Ethan and Benji to Paramount executives. <laughs> Okay. It's like a seven-year age gap between. Yeah, right? Benji looks older than Ethan Hunt He really also. does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine a man and his son, but the son looks older, and then they come together when he shoots a man in the back. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Anyway, the box office for this, it had a budget of $145 million, which I feel like was a bit of a gamble at this time. Because, mm. you know, Tom Cruise had done some weird stuff and true. whatever, and he wasn't necessarily a big box office drawer at this time. Mm. He was a known quantity, obviously. And it's about his wife disappearing mysteriously. Yeah. But it turns out she's not dead. She's just living on a pier or something. <laughs> yeah, she's living on a pier. That's cool. But this was actually... Definitely alive, Wink. Definitely alive. Yeah, I see her and I wave at her. Don't worry about it. She'll be back in a later movie. She'll be married to Wes Bentley or something. Mm. That's in a movie. Henry Cavill's in that one. Uh, anyways, this was the highest Tom Cruise box office performance at the time. Oh. So it came in at $693 million, which is a really good uh, amount of money to have. Oh, under yeah. most to all circumstances. That's a, that'd be a good amount of money to have in the old skyrocket, am I right? Definitely, Mason. Mm. Anyways, what a great time we've had. I thought it was a great fun time to be had. My favourite bit was, I think, the moment where uh, Benji releases the all the... All the Bees? Uh, yes. No, when he releases the door at the prison and then uh, a bunch of guys just come out and beat that guard really badly for <laughs> yeah. like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And you, I, I guess That's a good father-son moment. I guess you're supposed to assume that all the guards are bad people as well, but I'm also like, damn. <laughs> damn. Damn. He's not coming home for Christmas. No. He's dead. He's dead from the beating that he but, got. But, that, but, that's, but then it, 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 it starts there. It's not like it, a white-collar prison either. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, it starts there in a bloody... It, it goes a hell of a pace. And what a, what a film. I love this one. And boy, can Tom Cruise throw a rock. And then the rock bounces back. Anyways, if you do want to see these early, and why wouldn't you? Mm. You can actually head over to BigSandwich.co, where Ben and Lawrence always get the edit done early. Goes up there. 
a day, sometimes even earlier than that, even Mason. Mm. Uh, but that's not the only thing over there. It's like our private Patreon where we've got movie commentaries, where we've got bonus podcasts, Ooh. where we're doing video game Let's Play. That's right. We're good at video games. Every day we are. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we let people in on that. That's you right. Know? That's right. Yeah. As I said, it's kind of like a Patreon and it helps us keep the lights on, et cetera. And That's right. And everyone gets paid. Keeps do- it keeps James in big stunts. <laughs> yep. Is that what you want? Yep. It's going to be an interesting week next week, isn't it? Yep. Where I both drown and die of gas poisoning. You want me to look after the kids while you do that? <laughs> while I'm dead for the rest of my life. No, I don't have time for that, actually. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.